Hi, my name is Alex with ATEC Tech, Tech Tutorials, and today we're going to cover bugs. At this point, we've covered epics, we've covered stories, we covered tasks, and now we're going to talk about the lovely bug. If you haven't already, please make sure you subscribe to the channel, drop a like if you get any value out of anything from this video, and if you have any questions, concerns, comments, disagreements, let me know in the comment section below. Let's jump into an article where we're going to talk about and describe how bug management works in Jira first, and then we'll talk about bugs in Jira. All right, so here I am at Atlassian.com slash software slash Jira slash features slash bug tracking. Bug tracking is really, really uh, near and dear to Jira. If you don't know, Atlassian actually started as just a bug tracking software. It only used to do bug tracking, which is basically just a place for you to capture bugs as a developer and not lose sight of your bugs. Uh, most software, if you don't know, this tends to be buggy. <laughs> there, there tends to be some anomalies, some, some unintended behaviors. And um, every once in a while, you're gonna wanna capture those in the form of a bug. And so the wonderful makers of Jira many, many years ago, I think Jira is like 20 years old now, many, many years ago, decided to create this software to essentially help the developers track all these problems that kept popping up so that they can play a whack-a-mole later. Now Jira has obviously since then evolved quite a bit. It's now a really, really more, much more powerful tool, but the roots are still in bug tracking. And I kind of just want to talk about how does Jira track and handle bugs? Because bugs are slightly different, right? They're when you think about an epic, a story, and a task, those are very agile-esque terms. Those are terms where you're essentially always building something new. You're being very proactive in the development of some feature, right? You're, you're working towards creating something of value in which you're going to want to sell. So epic stories and tasks have a very positive connotation to them. They're, they're something that is really good for the organization, but bugs, however, they typically have a negative connotation, right? Bugs or defects, depends on the terminology you use within your company, bugs are problems. <laughs> bugs come and kind of hinder progress ever so slightly. So because of that, there are some techniques or some ways that I want you to kind of think about um, bugs because you should be handling them a little bit different. They're not, they're not essentially the same, right? You don't want to treat them the same and you don't want to adjudicate bugs the same way you would a story or a task. So let's talk about in Jira, what are we interested in, right? What what should we be looking out for when we're creating bugs so that we can maximize the usage of bugs? So first off, let me just talk about capturing bugs. So it's not rocket science, uh, just like the epic, the story and the task, you're going to create a bug in the same way. You're going to hit that create button but instead of selecting the issue type to be an epic story or task, you're going to select that red circle that essentially is a bug. And so again, this should be pretty transparent to you. There shouldn't be any learning curve here. It's just another issue type that you're creating. And so that in itself, capturing bugs is, is just super simple, the same process. What I do want to comment on is who and when should bugs be created in your organization? Creating bugs should be the most easiest thing to do because if you see something, you want people to say something. The last thing you want, the last thing you want is for a bug to be discovered in production. You don't want bugs over there. They will happen most of the time, some of the time, but you don't want them happening over there. So you want to encourage your developers to capture bugs when they see them, at the moment that they see them, so that it's also fresh in their heads. That you want them to capture the essence of the environment, of the conditions, of the time, of, of how to reproduce this bug. You want them to capture all this information the moment they see it or as close as possible to the moment they see it because bugs can take you down rabbit holes. Bugs can destroy a project. Bugs can destroy a schedule. They can destroy a budget if you let bugs get out of control. And so some teams are actually very intimidated. They're very scared by bugs and they'll tend to shy away. They'll tend to try not to capture the bugs because if it's a severe bug, some teams just can't handle it and they'll try to kind of sweep it under the rug. And so I'm here to tell you, you want to capture all the bugs. It doesn't matter the severity, it doesn't matter 
the reproducibility. It doesn't matter. If somebody sees something that they feel isn't correct, they should capture it. Now, this is really important. Once they capture it, not every bug is actually a bug. So you need to have a process, a process to help you adjudicate, triage each and every one of those bugs. Because then you want to review each bug for its validity. You want to make sure that it's not going to totally destroy everything and that there's actually merit to the bug. But you want to do that separate. You want to encourage everybody in your organization, if they see something, say something, create the bug. Okay? You want that behavior. You want anybody to create those bugs because you just never know when some different pair of eyes is going to capture something that just doesn't seem right and it actually is a real problem and, and, and you solved it right away. However, again, they might not always be right, so you always want to encourage them to capture them, but then you want to have a more structured process a um, change board, if you will, something to basically review every bug incoming and establish a validity of that bug. If you don't do that and you just accept every bug, you're also asking for a lot of trouble. So make sure that there's a little bit of method to the madness and then you're capturing those things. So that's the part on capturing. Now, the next part is priority. You want to, for every bug that comes in, you want to make sure that they're being prioritized, right? So have the developers automatically create them they can recommend a priority, but you want established senior level engineers, chief engineers, people with some authority, people with uh, overall architecture, people that understand the entire system. You want them looking at these bugs. You want them to triage these bugs, assign them an appropriate priority, assign, assign them an appropriate severity, two different things. Let me know if you want me to make a video describing those two things. But you should be assigning at a minimum a priority and a severity to every bug. Additionally, you should be checking reproducibility steps. Did the person that found the bug capture the reproducibility steps? Because the last thing you want, you do not want your developers spending calories trying to reproduce a bug that was an intermittent bug. Intermittent is probably at this point, probably one of the scariest words that I've ever heard because intermittent can really destroy a project. So you want to make sure that whoever captures these bugs, they're doing their due diligence to capture those reproducibility steps. Because without these steps, your developer is going to spend countless calories and hours and time not creating new features, but rather trying to figure out what the heck was going on when they to reproduce that problem. So you want to make sure that all of this is happening when you're doing your assignments and your prioritization, basically your triaging of your bugs. Otherwise, you're going to be introducing unhealthy issues into your project plan. So you don't want to be doing that. And then the last thing here is Jira will treat bugs the same way. So there is no right or wrong way here. Some teams try to do like a, a bug fixing only sprint where they're just fixing bugs, not recommended. Some teams will try to balance, right? So maybe they do like a 75, 50% new features and then uh, 25, 50% bugs. So you kind of have to find what works for you and your organization because what you don't want is you don't want to just carry all this technical debt and have like a giant um, bag of bugs that you, you're carrying from sprint to sprint because those bugs, trust me, if you never worked with software development, you won't appreciate how important it is for you to go and address bugs because when you let just one little crack, it's kind of like a windshield crack. If you've ever had like a tiny little chip on that glass, Right? And then eventually over time, that thing just completely just spiders and webs into the entire surface of the glass. Like that's what a potential bug can do to your overall software architecture. So you want to be very careful. You want to be very mindful. You want to be very cognitive of all the bugs that do exist in your system. And you want to make sure you're addressing them appropriately. Okay. And so you don't just want to stuff your bugs into the back and say, oh, well, we'll get to them eventually. Because doing that, creates problems, right? You're going to be developing new software. You're going to be developing new features. The code base is going to be changing. And it could be that a bug that was discovered two, three weeks ago is just irrelevant or smoke. Now it's a full fire. And so again, you want to play this balancing game and, and you want to be very, very careful. So in Jira, you want to be using and tracking bugs appropriately to maximize your efficiency and minimize your risk. Because if you ignore the bugs, if you just kind of don't treat the bugs correctly, or you don't encourage your teams to capture bugs, bad things may happen. So treat bugs very, very seriously. 
and be cautious and, and do your due diligence and adjudicate triage and get in front of the bugs. Don't be reactive to your bugs. Try to be as proactive as you can. That's it for this video. If you liked it, make sure you drop a like. And if you haven't already subscribed, please make sure you smash that red subscribe button. And if you have any questions, how are you treating bugs? What's your bug strategy? Did I miss something? Obviously, there's a lot more to talk about bugs. So if there's interest, let me know in the comment section below. I'd love to have a discussion. We haven't even touched the surface on like testing, how to find and capture bugs during uh, automated testing, unit testing, uh, integration testing. So there's a whole another world that we haven't touched coming soon coming uh, it's a long I, I this channel it's going to be your place to come and talk about all software development jira and and everything else so make sure you let me know in the comments let's build some interest and and let's get some stuff going there and so again subscribe i'll see you in the next video